So now let's go to Harriet Beecher Stowe's house. So you might be familiar with her name because she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. But today we want to talk about, you know, the house. They kind of do it like this, where one side of the land is dedicated to her. So that has her that their own little check in point and parking lot. And then the other side is dedicated for just Mark Twain. OK, so even though it's two different addresses and they're literally right there. OK, so pick one of the addresses and you'll be there. OK, but um, Harriet Beecher Stowe's address is at 77 Forest Street, Hartford, Connecticut. All right. So currently the Stowe Center is open four days a week. Monday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So obviously at the time of this recording, those are the days. But obviously, you know, as things uh, unravel or get better, that can, that's going to vary. So make sure you check the website or give them a call just to, you know, make sure that they're um, open the day that you guys want to come, okay? And so the tour size is roughly about six guests. So we got lucky. I think it was just, it was us two, another woman and her daughter yeah that's it yeah so it was real small and it was like two tour guides so we got lucky so it was kind of funny so the tour guide that we had literally it was our first tour ever so they had a more senior tour guide to make sure that she doesn't miss anything and you know stumble get those first day jitters and she did a great job shout no, out to her yeah um i could tell she was a little nervous but and you know what I'm saying? Like, who wouldn't be on their first day of the job? Okay, so in the beginning of the house, you remember that they had all these famous people with quotes and they're talking about uh, Harriet Beecher Stowe, right? So they allow you time to read that and, you know, they, just to get your mind wrapped around the time period, what the book meant, how it would make you feel. Uh, so I highly, you know, suggest you either read the book or maybe go to some website and, you know, get more research about the actual book itself and her. Um, anything else uh, did you want to uh, chime in on that one? Um, just wanted to add to about, I just wanted to elongate um, that whole conversational um, portion. I did want to say that um, because it was interactive, they did let you ask questions and they did let you express your thoughts after hearing certain things, which I thought was really great as far as it being more educational yeah. and um, really delving into what her mindset was around a lot of political issues too. Yeah. So she was really an interesting person. Yeah, in that regard. Um, she was. And like I said, depending on your side of the fence you are, like me being an African-American black man, um, you know, I have my uh, certain way of thinking or um, what I, how I, I received it. But like I said, this ain't the channel for that. You know, we're just talking about the house. You guys, uh, you know, make your own decision. But I do want to tell you about the tickets, okay? So for adults, it's $20. Uh, it's $15 for seniors. Children are about $10, okay? And oh yeah, so yeah. So I do I do remember, Hartford residents and children under six are, uh, are free, okay? Uh, so we can talk a little bit more about the house. So I'll talk about when Harriet retired. So when she retired, that's when she actually moved to Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, yeah. I thought she was from Hartford, Connecticut, but that's where they said she actually moved when she retired. Mm -hmm. And she moved there about 1873. So if you're listening to the time frame, she was actually neighbors with Mark Twain for a period of time. Yeah. So that's pretty interesting that they were Yeah, because like, you got two writers, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. like, and I think, I think Mark Twain was a real big fan of Harriet Beecher Stowe. Yeah. So. Yeah, and she lived there for 23 years. Mm. So that's a long time. I mean, so, she, like, yeah, yeah. So, essentially, you know, like I said, she was there the whole time that they was there almost. Um, yeah. So, her house was a little bit more modest. And when I mean a little bit, her house was 5,000 uh, 5, square feet. So, a lot modest, like half the house, right? Essentially. Uh, so, it's like a more of a brick for a uh, Victorian Gothic cottage home if you will. Still huge for that time period. Very big. Um, it's right on the street, so you better be, you won't miss it. Um, let me see. I would say, I think the house is actually beautiful. Uh, it has uh, <laughs> it had this little shop of horror type of feeling when you um, when you actually go to like her living room area, because she has that little room that, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's wild. But yeah, but the house is- It was is, like her sanctuary, which was like a garden. Yeah, yeah. And so. it was really beautiful. It was very serene. So you kind of got, got an idea for, always talk about self-care and what was her self-care and having something serene. So that was where she went to for 
um, solace, comfort, to unwind, to reflect. Mm -hmm. So I do like how like they really truly embraced like the living room area where like they used to host other families. Cause that was real big. You know, it was real big back then as I'm um, hosting. Uh, I think more or less we kind of got away from that per se. That we like people have homes and they like we have their living room. People really don't go into them. And then when you do host, you really just kind of look at it and just keep it going. So I do find it interesting that obviously for that time period that wasn't the case, and it was actually more of a speaking uh, piece, and that uh, you know famous people came from all around to visit these individuals. Um, so she did live in the home with her husband and her two daughters. Uh, so you have tons and tons of pictures of that, um, you know, pianos and things of that nature. Uh, so the property is actually a national historic landmark. And like I said, it's literally, I mean, like you can look out your window and be like, oh, that's Mark Twain. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like weird. That's been like, you know, two famous people living in the same little um, plot of land is, I would think unheard of. Like, I don't really hear too many stories about that. Yeah. But uh, it's, and it's like a third house there, but it uh, wasn't part of the tour, but it is there. Um, so for that house, you can take pictures. So you can take pictures. I don't think take videos, though. But pictures, yes. Like I said, uh, all in all, I would definitely go back. Um, you know, like, do you think you would go back? I definitely would go back. I feel like... Not only did you just, you know, get to see the home or just, you know, experience that that time frame of how they lived, but you also got a, a lot of in-depth information about them as a person, them as a writer. And one thing I was going to point out, too, is that um, they do have sort of an educational book space. Oh, yeah, yeah. Where... They more or less elaborate on some of the more or less in the Mark Twain because he had like an actual actual like classroom type oh, upstairs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But she did have it was like a room dedicated to books. Mm -hmm. Um, it talked about a lot of the controversy surrounding her book. Yeah. Um. So I don't want to get into depth because I want you all to experience that on your own, mm -hmm. and I don't want to give any personal opinions about that space. But it's definitely worth visiting. And just really asking questions, researching, and just becoming aware of the thought process that went into writing her writings, her her thoughts about um, what she thought about that political era, um, yeah. the you know the societal situations that were going on during that time. Really, really makes for um, an interesting tour. Yeah, like I said, you definitely get your conversation on. Cause we literally sat down in their uh, formal area. It's like like a little crescent, little seating area, and they have um, handouts and um, you know you just talk about what you feel. Yeah, just whatever kind of process you, that information that you're all you know you're taking in. Yeah, and it's like yeah. I said, whatever you come in, I would highly suggest that you kind of bone up on things so that you have something to talk about, and if you do have any questions, that you can ask it. You know, there, obviously. Mm -hmm. Now that's pretty much like I said. That's Pretty much both houses. Uh, which house would you rather see if you had to choose one? Oh, I think the Mark Twain house by far was just breathtakingly beautiful. I mean, it was immaculate. Yeah. I it mean, was, and it was so grand. <laughs> and it's like, you know, although we didn't get to take pictures. Piss me off. <laughs> I do remember a lot of the spaces. Like I, I tried to take a physical snapshot with my eyes and just really just adore what I was seeing in person. Yeah. You you just you just can't believe how people live. You can't. It's just yeah. it's crazy. All right, well, for and me, he lived. Yeah, he lived. <laughs> he lived. But shit, for me, I rather really do Harriet Beecher's uh, house uh, simply because she had, even though it's smaller, but due to the lighting. Like it was very bright in the house. Oh yeah. Like I felt like, you know, you go in Mark Twain house. I, I feel like the thing is haunted. Um, very it's, dark. It's super dark. Kind of gloomy. Cause like all the wood, it's like it's like dark, dark brown, just wood, and it just look. You know, it reminds me. <laughs> it reminds me of this one movie. Um, I think the the haunting or something like that with Liam Neeson and the houses. You know, uh, it's. 
yeah, it's just spooky in there. Uh, just this how it's set up. Like I said, like as soon as you come into the foyer, it is completely dark in there, and there's no light. But yeah, so then there's so many corridors and and rooms. I just feel like people got lost up in there. So, but yeah. all in all, I do agree that you know both are very um, entertaining. They're very um, good to see. Oh yeah, definitely a must see if you come to uh, Hartford. Uh, make sure you check out the other videos of uh, Hartford and all my other stuff too. You know what I'm saying? So. Like I said, it's Travels of Preston, and uh, make sure you like, subscribe, leave a comment, let me know what you think, if you've already been there, uh, with, you know, just some of your thoughts, okay? And uh, yeah, also, hey, hey, just, just want to throw this in there for my wife. Make sure you follow my wife, all right, on uh, Instagram, okay? Uh, she's really trying to get into the space of uh, just uh, self-care, but I'll let her talk a little bit about that so she can, you know, I, I want her, it's like a team, all right? So, you know what I'm saying? Work with me, work with her too. So I just like to support self-care. I'm a social worker. So I really feel like after having a lot of stress throughout the day and as well as anyone else that works and just lives life, they need to have some sort of way to take better care of themselves holistically. And so I started an Instagram and it's called life underscore is underscore her underscore name. And I just post very motivational, um, self-care related posts and just try to inspire people throughout the day. Yeah, I think that's actually needed, especially in this time uh, that we're all going through um, hardships. Yeah. So, um, like I said, everybody that's not fortunate as us or to travel or some of you guys out there. So that's the reason why we're trying to like, just bring positivity back through my travel to her, uh, you know, post of uh, just just motivating others for self care. So I just want to throw that tip bit. I thought that was kind of very very important, um, just to make you guys aware of what, what she has going on because I know you guys have seen her in past videos. Okay, yeah. and she's out there too. So all right, so this travels with Preston and my wife. Uh, we're signing out. All right, see you guys next Monday, Bye. eight o'clock p.m. Eastern. Okay, peace.